Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another show of the Empowerment Platform, where our goal is simply to empower you to reach your goals. Tonight, I have a special guest with me, Mr. Waikian Dean. What's going on, sir? What's up? What's up, Chris? You doing all right? Everything is well. And man, it is always great to have family on. I have a lot of guests, but I always feel good when it's family because I know that we come from the same place. We know the same things and we just know what life was for us growing up and how different that we kind of think than what was taught to us. Not that our family did anything wrong or didn't teach us what we needed to know all the way. It's just that there was a different mindset, a work yeah. hard attitude. And yeah. we have more of that, okay, generational wealth. How am I wealth building? How am I passing down financial freedom? And for me, that wasn't really talked about. We just did what we had to do to get by. You yeah. you work your job day in, day out. So it's always a pleasure to have family that knows exactly what I'm talking about and where I'm coming from. So, Joaquin, why don't you start with your why? Tell us what you do and then how you got into that. Okay. So what I do is uh, I'm not going to talk, talk about the company that I'm associated with, but what I do, I teach people um, – my financial literacy. I have my life insurance license. Um, have my investors license. Um, going to get a few more this year, and eventually get my uh, mortgage license. So I help people with that. Mm -hmm. um, so I sit down with families, basically educate them first, and then make, let them give them the option uh, to better select what they want to do. Now, how I got started doing this, I graduated college, right? I wanted to be a physical therapist. I, I went down and uh, got to a clinic. I was a PT tech. Six months after I graduated, somebody came in and said, I don't need you, 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 and you. Whoa. Like that. I was fired. Six months after I graduated. Now, I wanted to go to school to be a physical therapist. I actually got in from schools, uh, did my interview. Uh, I think my GRE was too low, something like that. Took the test twice, made the same score, so I wasn't feeling that. You know, so... Um, and I started teaching kids on VIP kids, it was, uh, Asian kids. So I would wake up at four o'clock in the morning, um, teach a few classes, and then go to work at eight and get home at five o'clock and then do it again. You know, I'd make maybe two grand a month, maybe 500, maybe 1500. Mm -hmm. And I just wasn't feeling it, waking up at four o'clock, you know. So our other cousin, Sherman, he said, Look, man, if you really want to make some money, if you, you're looking to you know, do something, hit up Nick. Right, so I hit up Nick White. Nick, uh, I do not remember what he said. I don't remember the presentation. All I know he said was this: you can make money at your own on your own hours doing what you want to do. You can make money, and that's it. Now, over the years, as I as I've you know learned this business, my why hasn't necessarily changed. I've added things on to it, and it's got stronger. So I'm still about making the money. Still okay. about building the rest of the world. But my why has changed to, okay, not everybody's walking around that's a black individual with a life insurance license and an event license. Ain't a lot of us walking around. Right. So I can right. help my mama, my little baby, my baby, 10 year old baby sister, start a retirement account at 10 years old. My girlfriend's daughter started a retirement account at 10 years old. My 21 year old baby brother started a retirement account at 21. Everybody in my community needs what I have, whether they realize it or not. So that's my story, how I got into this, why I'm staying, um, and that's my why. And, you know, you got to have a strong why, especially when you're doing something, um, you know, that, that you think or you have a passion to do. Oh, that's good. That is, um, you impact a lot. I definitely feel the passion. Now, tell me a little bit about what does it look like, or I'm a, just take me and we'll do a role play as you will. I'm a young husband. I got two kids. I have a family. I'm working a job. I make decent money. Um, I'm okay. My debt is, I got a little bit of debt, but it's okay. And I come to you and I say, you know, why can't I need to do more? I need to build a little bit more wealth. What can I do? Take me through a sit down with you. What do you take me through? Where do we go? So one, I show, I give credibility about the company um, that I'm with, that sponsored my life. First of all, because you know you don't want to be working with anybody, or you, you don't want to just do something not know the credibility, the reputation, and background of that company. 
And then second, I show all the reputable companies that work with me to be able to help you um, mm -hmm. build that generational wealth, do what you need to do. And then the very first slide I show people um, is the rule of 72. And, and the theory of the decreased responsibility. I teach them about, okay, you may need more life insurance now because you don't have a lot of money. Now, when you get ready to retire, you may need more money because now you're about to retire and um, you want to live off from that money. The very first thing I teach people is the rule of 72. You can look this up. A guy named Albert Einstein came up with it. He said, if you take 72 and you divide it by your interest rate, it'll show you how many years you take your money to go, right? And as far as you, I would say, well, one, hey, max out, max out that um your 401k. Get okay. what the job is going to give to you. It's free money. I mean, come on, it's free money. If they don't max it, get it. But even the government says, get a uh, supplemental, get something extra, right? So then I go into, okay, let's start this savings account, let's start this investment retirement account or whatever you know, you want, whether it's a college fund, whether it's this, whether it's that. So um, it just really depends on what you're looking for. So if you're looking to start a college fund, you're looking to leave more money behind, one, what you got to ask yourself is how much you want to leave, okay. what's your budget, what can you financially do with each month that won't hurt you, and two, three, what do you want to retire with? Okay, and I just had this meeting with a young lady. I said, okay, how much money do you want to retire with? Oh, I, I don't know. Okay, well, let me ask you this. What's your budget? I, I don't know. Okay, well, we got to know one of them. So we have a goal each month to be able to do what we need to do. And it's crazy because I sit down with people that's 58, 45, 28, 23. And I really try to grab them when they're young because when you get to be 58, 45, it's not too late. But now you're trying to accomplish in 10 years what you should have been doing in the last 30. Wow. Yeah. Uh, that's And that's something that I think we, a lot of people struggle with it and don't know it. They just don't know that, hey, I should have been doing this or what I was doing wasn't enough. It wasn't enough people around telling them. And I like you go out and you put the information out, you share it so people can at least have the knowledge that the other opportunity is out there. Mm -hmm. uh, with life insurance, how much life insurance do I need? And should I, I know some jobs offer um, some life insurance, but for a person, what do they need in life insurance? What should it cover? <laughs> Everything. Whatever, <laughs> how, look, and get as much as you, what I tell people, get as much as you can with the budget you have, okay? okay. And I think in the black community, and I, you know, I'm bringing up some of the meetings I've had, one of my clients told me, I don't want that much money on, you know, I, I won't, you know, I, I got a lot, I don't want that much, it's a lot of money. I'm like, and to me, that's that sounded crazy. I'm like, get as much as you can, because it ain't. It's not for you. It's mm. for them. This is not for you. If you can get thirty dollars with the life insurance and get a hundred thousand or two hundred thousand, get it. But life insurance, and it's it's different theories out there. There's a dime theory, then you got the life theory. Let me see if I can remember this. The dime theory is debt, um, and then I stands for income, how much you want to leave behind. You know, the the they can uh, benefit from it. M stands for medical expenses. And E stands for education. So, and then you got the life theory. And I, I forgot the acronym for that, but that's what the dime theory stands for. So, you want to cover your debt. How much would you want your wife to receive each month? She, she needs to mourn, right? 20,000, 10, 15, 20,000 bears you. So, you want to pay off the house. You want her to receive $2,500 a month, medical expenses, and then education. You want to leave that college for mine. So, it's different for everybody. Sometimes people just want something just to bury them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes people want some that start a family. So it's different for each person. When I typically start out with, I say, here's what a hundred thousand dollars look like. Okay, now what's your budget? And then are you looking to get more to cover what you already have? So um it, it's just it differs for each person, and that's the reason like I enjoy doing it so much, is because you're gonna run into different people with different budgets. Um that may want two hundred thousand, some may want a million. Some may just want 75 grand, you know. So that's that's what I when I sit down with a person, one, I do not want to go outside their budget. Um, because right. I want to feel comfortable doing it each month. That's number one. And then two, let's get enough to where if you were to die tomorrow, your family gets enough. And I'm gonna say this, I'm gonna let you see. What I tell people is life insurance is for now, 
the investments are for the future. If I give you this life insurance, I can bring your wife a $300,000 check. If you do this investment for $25 a month, I'm bringing her $25 next month. And that's what I try to make sure they understand. Oh, that's good. Think of that. Don't broke it down because the investment for the future is life insurance for now. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, briefly, can you discuss the difference between whole and term? So the difference between whole and term, whole life, and that's basically the only two life insurance that's out there. You got variable and universal, but whole life insurance lasts your whole life, of course. Um, you got the face amount, and then, of course, you got a cash value, which is a savings account attached to that whole life insurance. Now, what I tell my clients, no other life, no other insurance you know has a savings account attached to it. Now, term insurance lasts, just like it says, for a certain term of your life. Um, and I'm with one of the few companies that actually offer 35-year level term policy. Okay. And that's really the main difference. Term insurance lasts a certain term of your life, which is why you get more for a less amount. And it does not have a savings account attached to it, which is good. And then whole life insurance has a savings account attached to it. And that savings account may grow at 2 3%, you know, or whatever. Okay, so that may Which one do you recommend? What I recommend, and, and this is what I also sell to people, is term insurance. And the company on which uh, their motto is buy term, invest the difference. Mm -hmm. Now, where we grew up, go to that alpha office and get that whole life insurance. Go to that snack yeah. farm office, get that whole look, get it. That's now, the two. Yeah. Now, what I've learned and what I've sat down with people like, term insurance isn't for everybody. You know, that you know, that's just the that's the situation. Now, I do buy term investor difference. One, because, and this is why, and I've had family members, our family members and some clients have had this happen to them, that term, that whole life insurance, uh, when you borrow from that cash value, I know you heard the old folks say, I'm going to borrow off my policy, you got to pay it back at 6 to 8%. If you don't pay it back, they will deduct it from your face amount plus interest. Wow. Now, if you uh, decide not to borrow from it, you will only get the face amount. Now, nine out of ten of them work like that. Not all of them work like that, but that's how most of them work. Um, you you're gonna have to choose between the others, right? Um, when you die, you're gonna get the face amount. Your family get the face amount. You don't get the cash value. Some of the policies even say this: your beneficiary will get the greater of. Mm -hmm. And if your know, face amount is a hundred thousand and the cash value is seventy five, which one is greater? The face <laughs> amount. So they get the face amount. And then most of the time, the cash value is nowhere to be found inside the beneficiary anyway, right? Um, now, that might cost $100 for some people, for a family. With me, we give people 35-year term policies. I'm able to give them more coverage because it lasts for a certain term. Um, and with the kids, with me, uh, we can give them $10,000 or whatnot. And when they turn 25, goes up five times the amount. If the mom and dad pass, they get free life insurance. So the kids get got it good with us. And we take the what we save them. So they're paying a hundred dollars for the whole life and it only costs them seventy-five dollars with us. We take that savings they had and put it to that IRA mutual fund. Mm -hmm. Mutual fund got the growth, the IRA got the tax benefit, tax free on um, retirement when you turn 60 years old. So on this side, the whole life, you pay it for two, you get one. On the buy term investment difference, you pay for two, you get two. And then uh, with that mutual fund, that IRA or that life insurance, you can also increase it. But the, the thing I try to get people to understand is that in the game, we were told not to get term, but term is good when you got an end game attached to it, right? Which is that IRA mutual fund. Gotcha. So gotcha. if it's done right, and the yeah. market stays the way it stays, and yeah. like, like it has been over a long period of time. We know we have ups and downs in the market, but over time, mm -hmm. if you buy term buy invest term. In your IRA account, should be enough to supplement your life when you retire. Yeah, and the thing about that is, what I tell people, the IRA kind of works like your four hundred one k. You ain't gonna see. That return in the first five years of you working or the first three years of you working. You got to work that 30, 40 years for you to see that return, right? And even with the downs of the market, 
you wanted to correct yourself because if you didn't, we couldn't afford it, right? Right. So right. <laughs> even, even, and the thing about it is just staying disciplined, putting back that money, just put it back, right? And um, like with term insurance, with us, you can renew, no medical check. But once you renew, you get a lower amount maybe. Or oh, shoot, the only reason you need a life insurance in the first place is because you didn't have that money anyway. Now you got this 200 grand, 300 grand sitting over here. Let's just put the money I was spending on life insurance into this. And let's keep growing it. Or you could buy more life insurance, whatever you want to do. But at this point, at least you got um, a choice. And I sit down with people that's 58, 45, and they have term insurance with some, some other companies. And the number one thing they tell me is, okay, I'm about to, my policy's about to renew um, next year in two years, and it's going from $45 up to $86, 87 Wow. I said, well, if you was with my policy and you would have invested that difference over the last 25, 30 years you've had this policy, this is how much would have been inside that savings account. And they're like, oh, my God. You know, and I sit with people that that saving inside of savings accounts at the bank for growth, not for saving the emergency funds. They're saving it for retirement and for growth. And that's one of the main reasons like it's, it's necessary. Like you said, we were taught a certain way. And uh, I, I pride my dad in this because he actually sat us down and showed us what's inside his 401k, showed us about this and about that. Um, and, you know, he got his own business and he was just on the phone with me and my other two brothers talking about, OK, this is what needs to be done with these trees. This is what needs to be done with this land. Right. Trying to keep it in the family. So um, you said something when you said that. <laughs> That's beautiful. And as we're what is and. I want to do it for the people that hear you. What is the number one obstacle? And I think I might know, but, and I th I'm going to tell you what I think it is. I think people, one, they, the big obstacles and just don't have the education. And I think the second is they don't think they have enough money. So what's the minimum? How, I, I don't have no money. How do I get started? If you ain't got no money, what I tell you, hey, just get $25 and just throw it in there. And just, if you can't do it monthly, yearly, quarterly, quarterly, just get that $25. Just throw it in there. At least you got it open. At least it's grown. Okay. And then if you get an extra $100, $100 in six months and you want to throw it in there, let's throw it in there. But at least get it started so it'll be growing for you. Because the thing about it, you ain't getting them six months back. And no six months might have been the best growth of the year. You're not getting it back. Right? So at least throw something in there and just let it grow. And then for that second thing, it, it is the education. And the reason I say that is because when you're describing something brand new mm -hmm. to somebody, and they're like, when I sit down with you, let's say, Nadine, tell me what's the catch. It's too good to be true. <laughs> there is a catch. You got to be disciplined. You got to you gotta pay for the insurance, and you also got to be disciplined putting back that money each month into that investment account. So you can have it. Right. It's hard to see something in 30, 40 years. You know, you spend it back. I'm in year 15. OK, I ain't got that 200 grand, that 300 grand yet, but I got 60, 80. So teaching something to somebody new that has been taught this way for 25, 30 years and then trying to show them, OK, this is what the rest of the world is doing. <laughs> it is kind of hard because you know, now I've got to be patient with them. Um, and it's not it's not hard being patient with people showing them the information because I like to see. Oh shoot, that's what the bank is doing. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's how that works. Yeah. Now, this is what you can do to combat that, to make it better for your kids. So, teaching something to somebody new, and you know, my aunt's a teacher, and is good. And then is now I'm I'm trying to not necessarily convince you, but show you this is mm -hmm. the plan. This is what everybody else is doing. Everybody in other states in the world. We're just that 400 year wealth gap we've been talking about. We don't have the education to do what we need to do. Oh, that's good. That's good. You're trying to make up 400 years. Exactly. You know what? You said something. I ain't realizing. We're trying to make up 400 years of education in 30 minutes. 30 minutes. <laughs> 30 minutes. I'm trying to show you this is the company I'm working with. This is how, this is the rules of the money game. because You can't play the game unless you know the rules. Mm -hmm. And then this is the life insurance. I'm trying to show you all of that 
in a 30 minute span. So I don't one, don't waste your time, and two, I don't lose your focus. Right. So it gets hard, but at the same time, you know, when they sit down and they they learn the stuff and they're gonna talk with their husband or they might do their own research, um, it's still rewarding because now I know I just set that family up to have a few hundred grand when they get 60 years old. Right. Oh, that's good. That's good. Now for families with kids. How do they navigate this? Can they get accounts in their kids' name to start building wealth? Um, should they have life insurance for their children should, at young ages? And I guess when you're talking college funds, is there a college fund side of this that you offer that they can get into? Yeah. So the first question I have on my insurance, definitely. Um, and we can give uh, life insurance kids as young as 11 days old. I think it's 11 or 15 days old. Um, we don't give separate policies. The reason we don't is because it's so much more expensive to give kids their own separate policy. I can cover five, six kids for $10,000 a piece for $6. And you go out and get that same policy from another company, it might be $12 for one kid. Right? Mm-hmm. Um, so definitely get life insurance on them because one, if the worst, the worst happened, now you can start some start a fund in his name or her name or do something with that money, right? Now, um, as far as college funds, there are different things out there. You can open up a minor IRA, um, we can, and that's different you know, stuff, requirements for that. You can open up UGMA, UGMA account or a, a 529 plan at Coverdale. And what I tell parents um, is they need to think about their, their kids, what they might do. If they don't go to college, what if, what if you open up that 529 plan and they don't go to college? That 529 plan can only be used for college. It can't be used to buy a house, apartment, can be used to buy nothing else. Only college expenses, from what I understand. And then if they don't go, I think they have to wait till 30, if I'm not mistaken, to actually access the money. And I might be wrong on that. But with the UGMA and UGMA accounts and the minor IRAs, it's more flexible. College funds are penalty free, uh, or college expenses are penalty free. If they don't go to college, now let's just move that money to a Roth IRA. They keep building it, boom. So it's, it's you know different strokes for different uh, folks. It just depends on what you want. And what I try to give people, if they open up or something for their uh, kids, um, a minor IRA as long as they have some type of income, whether it's allowance or anything like that. It's an UGMA, UGMA account um, for college expenses. Or it might be a 529 plan, but most of them, most of my accounts are IRAs for adults and uh, the UGMA, UGMA accounts for kids. Okay. Got it. That's clear. So now that we have uh, navigated this process, we understand the different plans and you are offering them. Once I start to put money in and from what I gathered from you, I can up it as it goes. I don't have to wait a certain period. I can just start putting more in there. Yeah. So okay. the good thing about that, uh, the Roth IRA uh, and traditional IRA for if I'm moving a 401k, it's not a bill. And that's the number one thing I try to get, especially our people to understand, this is not a bill. Mm-hmm. So if you want to put 25 in each month and you say, well, Dean, I want to up it. Okay, let's up it to 100. Or Dean, my budget has changed. Can I, can I lower it? Let's lower it down. Or Dean, I need to stop it. My budget is messed up by this COVID-19 stuff. And I just put it on hold. We can put it on hold and it's still grow for you. Um, so that's the good thing about that. And if you want to stay there at $25 a month and you get an extra $200 and you want to throw it in there, that's the good thing about that IRA mutual fund that I offer. And the thing about, and I want to just make this clear, banks can offer IRAs. But what banks are going to put inside those IRAs are savings accounts. You know, and if you go, to, just look at your local bank, Google it. Wells Fargo IRAs or savings account or anything like that. The interest rates are going to be low because they're putting savings accounts and other low interest rate vehicles inside the IRA. The IRA is just a tax benefit vehicle. It's a good vehicle, but it's a suitcase. What are you putting inside it? And that's the number one thing I, I, I try to get people to understand about that. That's good information. I don't do that. Not at all. <laughs> yep. So when they start the account with you, and do you, I guess, are you managing their account for them? Are you watching it? Or is it really up to them to get the reports, read them, 
and have an understanding? Or do you offer that clarification around the accounts and what it's doing? So basically, I'm a glorified middleman. Um, if you wanted to invest, I would say, okay, I got these five companies that can manage your mutual fund. If you got any questions, if you need me to explain the interest rate, the companies that's inside of them, I will do that. And I call myself a, a smart dummy, right? I'm getting paid just to show you and lead you to this company who otherwise would never come to you, right? Most of these companies, you know, I don't want to say the companies, most of these companies will not come to you if you don't have $250,000, $200,000 sitting around. Yeah. yeah. That means there are millions of people that's ready to invest $10,000, $25,000 a month, $150,000 a month that I can access and bring to these companies. And they pay me for bringing those, those clients. Um, so yeah, that's that's the gist of that. Um, I, I I watch and you know yearly. You know I send out emails every four months, and yearly I go over my my clients' accounts with them. This is what it grew to. Um, this is what the gains on it. This is what happened here. This is what happened here. But I don't manage their money. Okay. That's what the pension fund manager. Is for he manages their money. He sees what company's going up and down. He has a degree in it. He's been doing it for 25 years. I let him manage the money um, in the companies, but I help the clients achieve the goals that they want to achieve. So they want 100,000 in 40 years, 35, 20, 25 years. Okay, this, according to my financial calculator, this is how much you need to put back to achieve that. Right. Uh, that makes sense. Uh, and I want to run back to something that you said earlier that I didn't think about that makes sense is with the life insurance piece. When I asked you how much should you have, you said everything that you can get because one, you want to pay off the expenses. But the other things that you mentioned, I didn't even think about yeah. having to get a check for yeah. so many months or so many years, depending on how much being yeah. able to take some of that money, and use it for college. Yeah. I didn't think of that in life insurance. The only thing I thought about was, okay, life insurance, you die, they bury you with the money, yeah. cover some debt for a little while, and then they yeah. go off. And so, that's the problem, and I don't want to say that's the problem in the black community, and other communities may have that problem, but we've been trying to think life insurance for the bury you, and when you get buried, now I, go, now I, gotta, now I gotta go back and deal with loss of income, because once you die, that's a loss of income that's never coming back into the household. So how are you going to supplement that, right? Life insurance income replacement, right? So you want to get enough to, you know, bury you because most people walking around with life insurance on the job, that's only 25, 30,000. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the job is the beneficiary. We need to check on that. Make sure the job is not our beneficiary, right? Mm -hmm. And then again, 20, that happens, look. And then again, 25,000 yeah. isn't enough to, it'll bury you. But then, okay, if I do have 10, 15, uh, ten, five thousand left over. What can I pay off? I can't pay off the house. I can't pay off the car. Five thousand dollars ain't gonna do nothing for a college fund. So, and I, I, when I see with clients, I try to get them to understand that what will pay off the house, what will pay off the bill. Because when you die, I want to be able to mourn for a few months, and I might need fifteen grand extra just to mourn those five months, or I might want to take that money and put it inside of an annuity. And that's another something else put inside of an annuity that'll pay me out a certain amount each month or a, a municipal a municipal bond fund that'll keep growing and pay me out each month. Um, so think about stuff like that when you buy your insurance. You know, it's it's uh, I don't like to tell people it's a life decision, but it could change your life if you do it right. You know, you can get three hundred thousand, um, hundred and eighty to pay off the house. Put back 10, 20 grand for the kids, and now you got enough left over to do what you want to do, right? So that's what you got to think about. Is and you can look this up, the dime theory, D I M E, and I think it's the life theory, L I L P. Okay, that makes that's good, good information because you know when you went through that, I was like, man, hold up, <laughs> I would think about, it. and yep. it, was, it puts a different perspective on it, a different spin. And now mm -hmm. you you can build wealth in that way. Yeah, and you, and you need money to build wealth. You know, the Bible don't say uh, 
money is the root of all evil. It says the what? The greed or, the, or what does it say? The, the greed or the love of money is the root of all evil. So, you know, to run a church, you need the money. To run a business, you need money. Um, money is just a vehicle or something you can use to obtain what you want. Money don't buy happiness, but it buys stuff that can give you happiness, right? So if you want to chop, you know, a house or a car, that money can buy it, right? So we just got to understand how to use money, right? Um, what what can I use this money for? How can I grow it? Where can I put it? Um, if it's to put into your house, make your house an asset, you know, you just got to understand different things you can do with money. And that's one of the reasons I, you know, keep doing this. I got my investment license and going to get more licenses because it's a lot of people. It's 300 million people walking around in the United States, you know, yeah. and, you know, that, that, that needs this. If they don't have it, it's somebody that's turning 18 that needs it. Somebody that's getting married every day that needs it. So that's why I never run out of clients. 300 million people, it's a lot of people to go through. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and this is something everybody needs. Every single individual needs to have life insurance because I ain't knocking nobody, but I don't like to see when somebody passes away and that GoFundMe page come up. Yeah. Help me. And- and then, Fish fry, and then the thing about that go funny, man. And I, and I saw this on Facebook somewhere. And it is somebody said I would still do a GoFundMe account because it's free money. And that's that's a wrong way to think about it. But GoFundMe is still taking a percentage of that money. Um even if you have on the job life insurance, you still need to get outside of the job life insurance because if you leave that job or you get fired, you no longer have it. So life insurance is necessary for a lot of just get it. If you're single, get it because you can give it to your brother, your mom and dad. And when you're single, it's so cheap. Why not get it? When you're young, it's so cheap. So like even my brother, you know, Ryan got it. You know, he even, I don't know how old he is. I just know I'm the oldest. I'm almost, I'm too old. And then Tyler, eventually he needs to get it. Um, But, you know, we're just not. And the one thing I say this, when I turn 25, 26, and I say this to a lot of my clients, you get these letters in the mail. You, you offer HIPAA. You're getting grown. It's, like it's, time, it's time to do stuff on your own. So when I sit down with people that's 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, I try to help them understand that. We're getting grown, right? We start to pay our own bills. So you need your own policy. You need you need your own investment account. You need this. You need that. It's time to start, you know, get off mama policy. Get off grandmama policy. Get your own. So that's what I try to tell people. And that's good, yeah. man. Not only are you looking, building and trying to shorten that 400 year gap, you educating people on things they need. And it's a mindset shift because I guarantee I can I, I bet my house on it. For the people to say they don't have money, I guarantee the shoes that they're wearing cost more than what they need to pay for. Yes. The fast food, the restaurants, the, the nice vehicle, the brand new this, the 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 purses, the wallets, the watches, the ring, all that money yeah. it can be your financial yeah. your life. And you know, I try not to I try not to sell it. In my three, four years of doing this, I've never sold anything to anybody. I presented to them, I offered it to them, and they made their decision. And when you sit down with people, they when they really know they need it, they they'll say this to me. Man, we can get this. We did that this week. We spent fifty dollars yesterday going out to eat. We we spend like twenty dollars on some shoes. Yeah, we can do this. And I actually have couples that do this. Uh, one couple said, "Hey, okay, I'm I'm gonna do seventy five dollars." So I set up their mutual fund. Then the women the woman that say, "Uh, well, shoot, you doing seventy five? I'm gonna do one twenty five, right?" So they competing with each other. You know, I'm, I'm trying to get more than you, or, or I'm, I need more life insurance on you because when I when you pass, I need to do this, this, and that. So, you know, what people need to understand. What I start doing, me and Kaya, my girlfriend, we start budgeting a lot, right? I'd rather my personal account be broke and have my investments and savings and business account with thousands of dollars. I do not mind it. I'll walk around with my personal account broke because I understand that my 38-year-old self, my 50-year-old self will thank my 27, 28-year-old self for what it did, right? And we just got to understand how to budget, right? We don't have to go out to eat $5 a day. That's $20. Then that's eighty dollars in a month. That could have went to forty dollars to life insurance and the other forty to an investment account. Is that simple? And we just got to think about it that way. 
That's good. I, I yeah. had a conference that um, Eric Thomas put on, and it was about finance. And they were one of the speakers was saying, "How much does it cost to be you? How much are you spending? What are your liabilities?" And then they broke. She broke it down to what are the essentials and the non-essentials. Mm-hmm. All that non-essential, that Netflix, it sounds good. Netflix, cable. I got four yep. five phones. I got the new iPhone. I got the new Android. I got Hulu. I got Disney Plus. And, and that's all. What you got Netflix and Hulu for? <laughs> you need to get rid of one. Uh uh-uh. uh So that's definitely what we're laughing. We're joking, but hear us when there is money out there you can allocate money mm-hmm. to this life insurance to this retirement to these investments because we're thinking about how you're going to take care of your family and how you're going to set yourselves up for generational wealth and doing yeah. that it's a level of delayed gratification you can't mm-hmm. get thing you want right when you want it. and you got to know the money game like Wakia said earlier you got to know how to play the game. When you know how mm-hmm. to play the game, you can win. We're too, we ain't even in the game. <laughs> nope. Exactly. We, we ain't even, we, look, we, we ain't even on the bench. We ain't make the team, right? And the thing about people think investing is hard or complicated or scary. What most people don't realize, you're already investing. If you got a job with a 401k, you're investing anyway. I mean, so you're already doing it and without knowing it. And like you said, like, like you got to know the rules of the money game. You can't play basketball unless you know the rules. You you watching other people. We're in the stands. Most people are in the stands watching the game being played, not knowing if I was and this is if I was to go out there and run around that basketball court, I get better health. My legs wouldn't be hurting anymore. My muscles would get a little bit stronger. I would be better health, you know, healthier, right? Same will apply financially. If I participate in this, I'll get wealthy. Not wealthy now, not just rich. Wealthy, I'll get wealthy. I can pass it down. If I just participate a little bit, $25 a month, right? Can equate to running a mile, right? Or doing some push-ups. You can just look at it like that. If I just participate a little bit, get educated, and not necessarily get educated on Google, because you know you only know so much with Google, you can do your research, but sit down with a professional. If it's not me, reach out to someone who's licensed, right, licensed and certified to be able to help you and make sure you're comfortable with what you are doing. That's good. And that's another, you hit another hit. Make sure you're using licensed individuals that know what they're doing, not your mama, cousin down the street who said he got this opportunity. <laughs> you might mm-hmm. lose that. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> license means legit. You know, and he, look, and even let's use this. You can't be a doctor or a physical therapist unless you, you got that what that license. You can go to school for years. If you ain't passed that license, you are not a physical therapist. You got to have a license. So license means legit. That's exact. That's what it means. So, um, and that's what I pride myself in. Ain't a lot of ain't a lot of people that look like me walking around. You know, one with a life insurance license, like I said, and can help you with investments. And eventually a mortgage. Now a lot of us walking around, yeah. so, um, get them certifications, get them licenses, and you will see your money skyrocket. And you will see a lot. My the money I make reflects the amount of people I help. That's how I look at that. So mm-hmm. that makes me feel, but you know, I get paid, but should I just help this family, right? So that's that's what I how I look at. That's good. So yeah. you mentioned licenses. You mentioned getting certifications. You all, you do this as a business and people can begin to, if they want, if they're looking for additional income or maybe they're looking for a career change, maybe they're interested in the life insurance, the financial industry. Walk us through how one can then start to, I want to get into this as well. How do I get into this business? What opportunities are there? So with, with me, the company I work with, we would need, we need to turn in your independent business application. I'm an independent contractor, right? Um, so we would turn it in, get you appointed with the company where we would get your uh, papers turned into the state. Um, and at that moment, we would start training you, right? We will work on studying. We have an online platform to study. You can take the test online at home in most states. Um, and the good thing about this, 
All the licenses are paid for. Only thing you pay for is the application fee to the state, which is, mm -hmm. you know, last month it was $24, and now it's $125, which when you look at it, it's not a bad deal when the life insurance license and investment license that itself costs $1,500, $800, mm -hmm. you know, $1,000. And I paid 124 and immediately got my money back the next week because I helped a family with life insurance and investment. So that's the process you will go through. Um, turn that application in. That next day will get you out on training appointments because I don't want you going out here talking to people, not knowing what you're talking about. That's why you got me. And I tell my people that I'm training, you sit there, don't you say nothing, you take notes. Only thing you need to worry about is studying. That's it. So that's and I we really try to get that across. Get trained, get trained, get trained. You only get trained if you go on a point. So um financial services is a good business to be in, and financial services and real estate, number one business to make millionaires, you know. Um, and if I don't become a millionaire, I'll make a lot of money getting there. So that's the process. Hey, that's the process to get licensed um with uh the company I'm with and get state and federal license, right? These, these these licenses are checked by the attorney general. They they go through your background. They went through my background check. I found stuff I didn't know I even had, right? So mm -hmm. that's why everybody can't get these licenses. So it's not hard. It's easy. I pass the test. It's a multiple choice test. It's not hard, right? So you just go through that license test. And as you go through each license, you go to the next license. And with the company we're with, they make you get the life insurance license first because that's what helps um, the client the most. Then you can get your investment license. Then you can get your mortgage license. And then, of course, we offer other things like auto home insurance, home security. We can go into a school system, take over 401k, offer a business, a retirement account, you know, something like that. So um, there's a lot of things we can do. But anyone that's interested, it doesn't affect your full-time job. You can do it after work. Um, it's no quotas. You choose the income you want to make. You just got to sit down in front of people. That's it. And it's not that scary. I mean, the thing about it, um, if you were to do this with any other company, they would make you cold call people. Or you have to quit your full-time job to even be there. But with the company I'm with, you don't have to quit your full-time job. You grow this business while you're still working. Um, no quotas. And you working with warm market people, and in three years, I still haven't ran out of clients. So that's the good thing about it. And that's good. And that's good. It definitely shows, and I think that type of business you definitely need to have your heart in it. So I would encourage people to make sure you're in it for the right reasons. Um, yeah. And that's what a lot of businesses. Most people get in business to make money. I want to make money. I want to make money. But if you get into a business to provide value to solve problems for people. The money is a byproduct. Mm -hmm. So the yeah. passion you have. And, you, and what, you know. Go, oh, ahead. go ahead, go ahead. One of our cousins, I was talking with um, Andrea. Andrea said, um, Joaquin, um, you know if you really want to do this, if you get a lot of no's, no, 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 and you still got that passion, and I and I forgot what passion. I think passion means you you're willing to sacrifice everything for. And if you still got that passion to go and do it, then God called you to do it. And shoot, I get a lot of no's, but everybody's not gonna tell me no. But mm -hmm. if you got that passion and the willingness to go and do it every day, even after you get the no's, even after you have two weeks of no business, then you then it's you're there for more than just money. Money is good, but the reason I keep calling people, the reason and two, because I know that people need this information. They they need it. Right. This stuff that should be taught in school. And most people <laughs> don't even know about the accounting and business majors don't even know about the rule of 72 most of the time. And that's what they do. They deal with money. So it's crazy. But that's just how it is. Yeah. And that, that you mentioned, I, I want to hit two more. Number one, it definitely should be taught in schools. We, this just financial literacy not being taught in elementary, 
middle, mm -hmm. high, and in college is ridiculous yeah. because people graduate and then they don't know what to do and they're behind the curve already. Now, yep. the people who are successful, they have families that are successful. So they're being taught that in the home. The next thing that you mentioned about the nose, we are programmed. People are programmed from birth just hearing, no, don't do this, don't do that. They say that you got to get through seven no's before you can get to a yes from an individual person. Uh -huh. So don't on them. Just keep, just keep yep. calling them. Keep asking them because we're programmed to just say no. Nope, I don't yeah. need it. Nope, I don't want it. And don't even know that it's really beneficial or good for us. But after hearing it and hearing it and hearing that mind opens up is okay. Now it makes sense. Let me give Joaquin a call. Maybe I'm ready now. <laughs> and the thing about that, man, and everybody got this season in their time. And I'm going to use this as an example. If so, a friend I went to college with years ago. And I tried to sit down with him three, four years ago when I first started. Right? And, you know, we can never sit down, you know, uh, Kept him move, and he was, you know, we we're both busy. Three years later, this year, he reached out to me to, hey, you know, I'm ready. I can go ahead and do it. Mm -hmm. He connected me to another person that was ready, and it was their season to start saving and investing. And they wanted to now, hey, I'm in the mood to get my license and to make the money also. If I would have met my friend three years ago, I would have never ran into the person he referred me to. And everybody got their time and their season. You know, back three years ago when I lost my, when somebody fired me, there was nothing wrong you could say to me. It could have been any business, and I would have did it. Can't say <laughs> the wrong thing to the right person. So right. everybody has their season. What I try to do, like when I post or when I go up to people, I make sure they know what I do. Because when somebody asks, um, what do you do? They're really asking, how can you be a value to me? Right? Yeah. So. That's what I try to do. I always, hey, I'm the, I'm your life insurance guy. I'm your investment guy. Whatever you need me to do, because in the back of your mind, I want you to know, hey, why Ken does this? Let me reach out to him. I remember the post he made three months ago, right? So, what we call in our business, don't be a secret agent. Let people know what you're doing, right? And the only way you can do that is by expressing yourself on Facebook, um, posting, doing the phone calls, going through the nose. And you might get 50 no's or your first 10 appointments may be great, right? And you got to look at other people that's been successful, like, you know, Magic Johnson. I think he went through a bunch of no's before he started some business. And even he has a, matter of fact, Warren Buffett and Magic Johnson own life insurance companies and have investment life, right? So that's another reason you need to get into the financial services business. But you said something about, you know, successful people and going through the no's because we were trained to like think that no, that, that's the end of it, right? But you got God trying to make sure that you want it. He ain't just trying to give you this this type of power um, and just for you to just do what you want with it, right? So you, I'm just a vessel, right? I'm getting paid for it, I'm good, but hey, I'm, I'm just a vessel to help people who otherwise would never be helped in rural Alabama. Or right up here in Montgomery. Or, you know, we're trying to go to Florida, right down there in Florida. Mm -hmm. So I know the power I have and I understand the knowledge that I have. And all I'm trying to do is get it out to some people that will listen. Right. And I, what I pray is this when I pray, I say, God, let me meet people that are in the season for them to meet me. Which means I don't want to, and I, this might be a bad thing to say, but no wasted meeting. Don't let it be a wasted meeting. Don't let it be okay. They don't, you know, not ready yet. I want them to be in the season where they need me for whatever, whatever they may need. Oh, that's good. That's good. Because when you have the divine appointment, it's mm -hmm. always the right time. It's always the right time. And that's a good thing because some people, like you said, they're just not in the season. Their mind not right. They're not financially stable. They're going through traumatic experiences. Yeah. And sometimes it takes something bad for them to be in that season. That's the bad thing about it. Somebody got a pass or they got to lose their job. And that's that's the bad thing about that. Something devastating has to happen for them to wake up. So that's the bad side about that. So I'm going to give some the knowledge on you and <laughs> share a little bit with you. So with the assessment that I give, it shows behavioral tendencies of people. Now, in your phone calls, in your meetings, Here's some things that you can pick up on that can help you close those people that might not be ready to hear what you're saying. Because it's not that they're not ready, 
is that you're speaking two different languages. Uh-huh. So there's four characteristics. <laughs> it's the D, the I, the S, and the C. Write that D- down. Hold on. We're going to write this down. Get the, get the phone out or something. <laughs> get, get your notes out. Get your notes out. The D, the I, the S, and the C. Yep. So the D stands for decisiveness. These are your people that they're problem solvers. They want results. And they want it yeah. now. Those are the uh-huh. people that if you're communicating with them, if you're talking to them, they're going to be like, okay, how does this help me? What's the end mm-hmm. result? Or they may be, I don't have a lot of time. So they're on a hurry. They're trying to move mm-hmm. quickly. And they want to know how you can solve the problem. So when you communicate with them, you use the terminology. This is the result you'll see. This is the benefit. This is mm-hmm. how it can help you. I don't want to take a lot of your time. Like, oh, mm-hmm. I'm busy. I don't have much time. Well, I'm not going to take a lot of your time. I just exactly. want to works then you got the eye the eye is the interactive person dreams vision goals big picture they're going to tell you their whole life story so you connect with them emotionally yeah uh-huh. that's right. i hear you and then when you drop the product on them you do it in a sense that connects it to their emotions mm-hmm. this is the family this is how it's going to support your vision and then mm-hmm. you got now you got the s the S is for stability. They're slower pace. They thrive in structured processes and they're like team players. So when you're speaking to them, you're going to have to slow down. You're yeah. going to have them to step by step. They're going to want to see the slides that you have. They're going to mm-hmm. want that it's safe. They're risk averse. So they're going to want to know it's safe. And they also have that emotional connection. So you want to make sure they know how Having life insurance, being able to invest will help them and their family because that's what they do. They're supporting. Mm-hmm. At the C. The C is skeptical by nature. Yep. They like <laughs> they're quiet. They want to know that all of you have checked all the <laughs> check the check marks, crossed the T's, dotted the I's. They want a systematic approach to how you're going to help them. Mm-hmm. They're not very emotional. They may seem cold, but what they're going to do is they're they're fact checking you. Everything you tell them, they're going to be writing it down so they can uh-huh. go look. So you want to speak to them in the manner of here are the facts, here is the information, here is how it will help you, here is A, B, C, D, E, and F. And I tell you what, I email you the rest of the information because that's what they want. <laughs> the S and the C, they're probably not going to make a decision quickly. Both mm-hmm. of them slower pace, so don't rush them. Tell them to take their time. You know, I'll follow up with you in a few days. The D and the I, you could probably close them on the telephone if you connect. Yeah. So, and I've noticed myself getting better at, um, and of course, when you do something for so long, you 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 start to get better at it, but. Getting better at those high energy people that you know tell you the whole life story, and then people that just sit there like this. Like my last meeting, all she did was this, <laughs> and then ask quick, you know. So you know, and I, I, if I can't close on the first appointment, I always I email it to them, and I go ahead and hey, let's set something for next week. Let's go ahead and get you on the book for next week. So I'm starting to get better at that, and I want to get you know, of course, better and better. But noticing their energy right from the get go of that meeting. And now I know what to call them. You know, if me and Kai are gonna be studying that. Now I know what to call them, and I can actually take that to my, you know, my team and uh, let them know what you said. But that's that's good right there. And I'm I'm gonna get better at that. I gotta read people's emotions more, and not necessarily use them, but play to them and try to say, okay, this is why, or this is that. And I don't run into a lot of clients that um know a lot about what I'm saying, but when I do. I'll be ready for them. I'm prepared. Hey, this is what this is. Boom, boom, boom. Right? So, and most of the time, they're just trying to, like I said, fact check you, try it, because they think they know as much as you do. They might not. But look, I'm the one licensed. I'm the one that went through this. So, we're going we gonna to see who know the most. But that's good. I need to take one. Yo, you offer classes like that or something? I need yeah, to take I one of the I got you. I'm about it. Okay. And another thing your repertoire is learning these things is mirroring. So if you got the energetic person, you pick your energy yeah. up, mirror yeah. them, and they feel yeah. that builds a comfort level. Yeah. If you talk yeah. to a student, 
person. Slow down. Yeah. Or meet them where they are. They don't even know that you're mirroring them. They just know that, oh, man, I saw, I'm feeling more comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. That'll help you with the sales side of the business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to get on your page and look some more stuff up. Look. <laughs> hey, this might. Hey, this might be a turning point. <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. So, you can, if you could leave us with one or two major, major things, what should people know? What should they do? What should they do next? Well, what they should do next is uh, one contact me, right? Uh, especially whatever you're trying to know, and I don't, you know, I don't deal with credit, I don't deal with taxes, but I'm connected to people that does that stuff. But contact me, even if it's not, even if you don't do business, get the education. If you want to go compare it to another company, go compare it, but get the education. Sit down with your spouse, think about it, and then come back and let's make a decision whether it's yes or whether it's no. And the only fee I charge is that you lead me to more people that I can help. So that's the number one thing you should do is get in contact with me. Um, pretty sure my Facebook link will probably link to this page. My number, 334-201-3699. Um, my email, and y'all probably won't catch this, but this is my email, W-Y-K-E-I-N-R-D-E-A-N at gmail.com. Um, just email me. That's my business email, but that's what you guys need to do. Just get the education. It's a 20-minute meeting, uh, 20, 25-minute meeting. Just get education. Make the decision to do something to change uh, your child's life or your future. It's never too late to invest. It doesn't matter if you're 60, 67. The only thing that changes is the objectives you are trying to accomplish at your age. Good. That's great information. Thank you. Thank you. What I'll do is I'll make sure I type in your email in the comments, link your page. Put your information out there so the people can have it because oftentimes you know people listen and then they make a decision later and yeah. then back yeah. in there like what's the information i got you mm -hmm. so make sure we make that connection for people who are looking to get their life insurance right invest and even if you want to start a business why can can help you with that get you on that right path and get you moving forward so again my kid, thank you for joining me. I definitely appreciate it. You have dropped some things on me, made me think some things through. <laughs> hey, you did too. So I, yeah. <laughs> I appreciate you having me, man. You know, it's, I'm glad you, you know, asked me, and I'm glad I was just able, you know, if I touch somebody or if I reached out to someone, that's what it's about. Uh, I'm just glad that you know I was able to come onto your platform because I watch it, I see it. Um, you had a couple people on. I think you had Nick on before at one point, I think, uh, maybe last year. So I'm, I feel like I've made it now. Shoot, hey, I'm, I'm on Facebook. Hey, Facebook, wherever this is going, I'm, I'm on it. So I made it. I got, I got to keep going. So thank you for real, man. Absolutely. And thank you for joining us again for another episode of the Empowerment Platform. You have a great rest of your day.